day, viewers. My name is Agali Belinda Chizov, and I'm taking you on the subject chemistry and the topic hydrogen and its compounds. By the end of the lesson, students should be able to list the isotopes of hydrogen, describe chemical reactions that can prepare hydrogen in the laboratory, list species of hydrogen gas, describe methods of preparing hydrogen gas industrially, and then lastly, list the physical and chemical properties of hydrogen. Hydrogen is said to belong to group 1 for convenience sake since it has only one electron in its valence shell. Hydrogen has variable oxidation states. It, remember what an oxidation state is. The oxidation state of hydrogen is plus 1 when it is combined with a non-metal as in methane, ammonia, water and HCl. Why the oxygen state of hydrogen is minus 1 when it is combined with a metal as in uh, lithium hydride, sodium hydride, calcium hydride, and lithium aluminum hydride. Hydrogen will not occur in the free state in the atmosphere, except as volcanic gases. It occurs in combination with other elements as compounds, such as water, acids, and in most organic compounds. The sun is about 90% hydrogen by mass, and the light being emitted by the stars is pure hydrogen, isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen has three isotopes, common hydrogen called protium, meaning that it has a mass number of one, atomic number of one. Heavy hydrogen, or deuterium, has a mass number of two, and an uh, atomic number of one. And lastly, tritium, having a mass number of three and atomic number of one. This means that isotopes are elements that have the same atomic number but different uh, mass numbers. Protium and deuterium are similar in chemical behavior. They form water and deuterium oxide or heavy water, respectively. Tritium is an unstable isotope of hydrogen. It is radioactive, meaning that this can undergo radioactivity. How do we prepare hydrogen in the lab? It is prepared by the following methods. Action of dilute acids on reactive metals. Hydrogen gas is usually liberated whenever a metal above hydrogen in the activity series reacts with dilute mineral acid. For, for example, potassium, sodium, and calcium react explosively with dilute mineral acids. Hence, these metals are not suitable for the laboratory preparation of hydrogen. The gas can be conveniently prepared by the action of dilute hydrochloric acid on zinc metal. There is no heat required. You can see the equation of the reaction. Where zinc, which is gray in color, reacts with HCl to give us zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Here you can see dilute hydrochloric acid being poured on the zinc pieces and then delivered through the tube to form a hydrogen gas. Another method is by action of cold water on reactive metals. Reactive metals like potassium, sodium, and calcium react with cold water to liberate hydrogen gas and give it an alkaline solution. However, the reaction with potassium or sodium is very violent. At the equation of the reaction, we can see two sodium ions, two sodium atoms, sorry, reacting with water to give us sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. You can see the sodium wrapped in a wire gas. This is because of uh, the violent nature of this uh, reaction. When you test this solution with litmus paper, it will show you that this solution is now uh, alkaline. Another method is by the action of steam on iron. When excess steam is passed over red hot iron filings or nails placed in a combustion tube, the colorless and odorless gas evolved is hydrogen. It can be collected over water. You can see iron reacting with water vapor to form iron three oxide and then hydrogen gas. This method can be used to obtain a large quantity of hydrogen cheaply. Metals such as magnesium, aluminum, and zinc 
also react with steam to liberate hydrogen gas. In this diagram, we can see boiling water going through this place as steam to the ion filings to generate a hydrogen gas. Action of alkali on metals. Metals such as zinc, aluminum, tin, and even silicon. Silicon is a metalloid, meaning that it has the actions of a metal and non-metal. React with a hot solution of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to produce hydrogen gas and the corresponding salts. You can see zinc reacting with sodium hydroxide to give us this product and hydrogen gas. And then aluminum reacting with hot KOH plus water to give us a potassium alum and then a hydrogen gas. The same occurs here with silicon and the sodium hydroxide plus water. Another one is action of water on metallic hydride. Sodium hydride or calcium hydride reacts with water to produce hydrogen gas and an alkaline solution. You can see sodium hydride reacting with water to produce sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. The same applies with calcium hydride plus water to give us calcium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. How is hydrogen prepared industrially? Hydrogen gas is produced on a large scale for industrial use by these methods. From hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon that we use is natural gas, and methane is the main constituent of natural gas. Why it is passed over steam with nickel as catalyst at 80 degrees C and 38 C? Calcium, sorry, carbon two oxide and hydrogen gas is obtained. This is a mixture. We have not gotten the hydrogen gas directly. More steam is passed over the products to convert carbon two oxide to carbon four oxide. You can see the methane reacting with water to give us this. Why this is passed over more water to give us carbon four oxide plus hydrogen gas. The carbon four oxide is removed by passing the mixture through a solution of potassium hydroxide, leaving behind only the hydrogen gas. Why it is so is because carbon four oxide is an acidic gas, so it will react with this to form a salt and water, and then leaving us with the hydrogen gas. You can also prepare hydrogen gas industrially from water gas. This is known as the Bosch process. In this process, large quantities of hydrogen are produced from cheap raw materials, namely water and coke. The reaction takes place in two stages. The first is the production of water gas. This is steam reacting with coke. Coke is mainly carbon. So give us water gas, which is carbon two oxide plus hydrogen gas. And the second stage is the reduction of steam to hydrogen by the carbon, four, or carbon two oxide in water gas carbon two oxide plus hydrogen gas, this is the water gas, plus steam, which will now reduce this steam to hydrogen gas, leaving behind carbon four oxide. The last method is by electrolysis. Very pure hydrogen gas is obtained as a byproduct from the electrolysis of brine, sodium hydroxide, or dilute H2SO4. This is example of how you can produce hydrogen gas by electrolysis. Remember, electrolysis is simply the decomposition of a chemical compound by electricity. This is what is supplying our power to the cathode, then to the electrolyte. The electrolyte solution can be brine, it can be sodium hydroxide, it can be H2SO4, of which when water goes in, hydrogen gas goes out. One on the cathode, on the anode side, sorry, the oxygen gas goes out. You can also obtain hydrogen gas from cracking of petroleum products. Hydrogen is obtained as a byproduct in the catalytic cracking of petroleum. Physical properties of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless uh, gas. It is neutral to moist litmus paper. It is relatively insoluble in water. It is also the lightest known substance and has a very low boiling point.
Then the chemical properties. One, it can act as a reducing agent. When hydrogen is passed over heated oxides of copper, zinc, iron, tin, lead or silver in a combustion tube, it removes the oxygen, leaving the metal as a residue. Hence, hydrogen gas is a reducing agent. You can see you can reduce copper oxide using hydrogen gas to get the metal copper, which is a very useful metal. Hydrogen, however, cannot reduce the oxides of sodium, potassium, and calcium because they are strongly ionic. Ionic in the sense that the metals in these oxides casually belong to group 1 and group 2, and they are very strong electropositive elements. Hydrogen can also react with non-metals. Hydrogen undergoes addition reaction with non-metals. For instance, it can add itself to chlorine to form hydrogen chloride gas, can form itself to sulfur to form hydrogen sulfide, and then itself to nitrogen to form ammonia gas. Hydrogen can also act as an oxidizing agent. Remember we said that it's also a reducing agent. This is because hydrogen is said to belong to group 1. It can act as a metal. It can also act as a non-metal. Hydrogen reacts with highly reactive metals such as sodium, lithium, and calcium to give corresponding hydride. You can see it reacting with sodium to produce sodium hydride, reacting with calcium to produce calcium hydride. In this reaction, hydrogen is reduced. It is now acting as an oxidizing agent. Reaction with hydrocarbons. Hydrogen undergoes addition reactions with unsaturated hydrocarbons, alkenes and alkynes, to give the corresponding saturated alkenes. Saturated in the sense that it has the complete hydrogen atoms in the structure. You can also produce an alcohol using hydrogen. Hydrogen can react with carbon 2 oxide at 300 degrees C and high pressure to give methanol and alcohol. You can use methanol in the spirits as we use in the hospitals. Laboratory tests for hydrogen. When a lighted splint is introduced into a gas jar of hydrogen, it explodes on mixing with air with a characteristic pop sound. The pop sound is due to the violent combination of hydrogen with oxygen to produce a steam. This is the unknown gas in the test tube. This is magnesium ribbon reacting with acid to generate hydrogen gas. So once you put a lighted splint into that test tube, you will now hear a pop sound showing that the gas is hydrogen gas. Use this of hydrogen. Hydrogen is used in filling weather balloons because of its lightness or very low density. It can be used in the production of ammonia by what we know as a harbor process. It is also used in oxyhydrogen flame, used in cutting preheated metals because the mixture has a high heating value. It can be used to convert coal to crude oil. Remember, it is a very good reducing agent. It can be used in hardening of vegetable oils to obtain margarine. When you add hydrogen to vegetable oils, obtain margarine or butter. It can be used in the manufacture of plastics, in the manufacture of methanol, as a reducing agent in the production of metals such as copper and lead from the oxides. In the production of water gas and coal gas used as industrial fuels. And lastly, in the synthesis of hydrochloric acid. Evaluation. We have learned what isotopes are and different isotopes of hydrogen. So we can list isotopes of hydrogen. We can mention three chemical methods of preparing hydrogen in the lab. We can list the uses of hydrogen and also give two methods of industrial preparation of hydrogen gas. And lastly, we can also list the physical properties of hydrogen gas. We have come to the end of our lesson. And after evaluating yourself with the evaluation guide, you can now describe hydrogen, its occurrence, its isotopes, the physical and chemical properties, and then lastly, the uses. Thank you for listening.